were three men, and when the king made a hoil, and he and said, everybody needs to buy a bow down to this idol. But you know what? There were three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They weren't willing to lay down and bow down to their God. And you know what? They took them and threw them in a furnace because they stood for righteousness and for truth. And you know what? God came forth on their behalf. And you know, this is a day in which we live where we got to stand up for truth. And if we don't have stand for truth, we'll fall for everything. I pray that God will build us and reach to the higher moves. And he will back us up and we will come forth stronger than ever. God bless you and every one of you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that has anything to say? Please feel free to come up. Like I say, the mic is yours today. <laughs> what he said. You don't see my dad's my grandson. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that little children will eat them. <laughs> Come on, I'm sure with all these people here today, somebody's got something worthwhile to say. I know it. Feel free to come up. You know, my biggest fear right now is that the wolf is in the stable. And the shepherd's helping the wolf eat the sheep. Come on up, bud. You can say it again. Come on. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't let fear rule you. Say freedom. Woo! Woo! Like he said, freedom. I guess I fell into the rabbit hole a couple years ago when this all started. And I started digging deeper and deeper. And the deeper I went, the more I found out. It's crazy. We're in a rough time, man. I'm a family man, I got two small kids and a wife at home. I can't go to work because I won't get a fucking vaccination, pardon my language, I'll stop that right now. Um, because I won't get a vaccination, I can't go to work, that's absolutely ridiculous. I never thought in my lifetime that I would ever have to say those words. I can't provide for my family because I won't get a vaccination, an experimental vaccination. There's only two viruses in this world that carry the same protein. One of them's HIV, which uses mRNA to attack your cells to produce a protein strand that actually kills the cell after it's done. The other one is coronavirus. COVID-19 has the exact same protein. This is how we know for a fact that this was manipulated and created in the Wuhan lab. It was funded by Dr. Fauci and the NIH. Anyone who says otherwise is not paying attention. The vaccine, oddly enough, uses the exact same mRNA technology as the HIV virus. mRNA goes to your cells to tell your body to produce a protein that it's never produced before. So that you're, it will make an immune response, that's what they're saying. But if you look at what HIV does, it will turn into, after the cell is dead, it will turn into acquired immune deficiency syndrome, which is AIDS. So anybody who, who thinks that, you know, this, this new technology is a good thing, it's not. If your body's producing a protein that it's never produced before, how can that be good? And if that protein is going to take over the cells and then kill the cells, how can that be good? Why do you think they want to jack you up with booster shots every six months? So they're going to give you two jabs and that's not going to be enough. You're going to need another one every six months. And if you don't get it, your vaccine passport is as good as nothing. Because you will have to go, it's gonna tell you a date when you need your booster shot. If you don't get your booster shot by that time, your vaccine passport is null and void until you get your booster shot. And this is how they're gonna win. That's right. You should come up and say some stuff after. 
Oh yeah, but that's good. That's what we need. We need people who are vocal and willing to speak the truth. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day that I work with. And uh, we had conversations over one shift about 28 days in Labrador. And it's against everything he stood for to get a vaccine, to get this particular vaccine. Because we all know it's not about being anti-vax. I got all my other vaccines, so do my kids. But this is not about a vaccine, it's about control. It's about extortion. It's about coerced consent. And do you realize that if you get coerced to give consent and you walk in under your own steam and you sign that piece of paper to get that jab into your arm, you're the only person held liable for that. That's why they want to coerce you into your consent, because the government not li is not liable for any adverse reactions or death. The company that you work for is not liable for any adverse reactions or death, and neither are the pharmaceutical companies. So therefore, you're left on your own. I actually called my insurance company, Desjardins Insurance, through my work office, and sure. And I could tell from the look on his face that he looked defeated. Couldn't believe he did it. Almost makes me cry talking about it. And I could tell he felt defeated and ashamed because he gave he gave away all of his principles. He said he wasn't going to do it, and he came. And the reason why is because I don't know if you've noticed, but in the last three years they've been shelling out debt like you wouldn't believe. All you got to do is go to the bank and ask for a loan. Oh, we got lots of money. We'll give you some money. Even though it's all just digital credit, it's all just somebody typing it in on a computer. And then they hold that debt against you. This is what they're holding against everybody. Your livelihood pays for your debt. If you don't have a livelihood, you can't pay for your debt, therefore you go in the rears. Nobody wants that. So everyone wants to keep their job, everyone wants to keep their money. I mean, it goes without saying, so do I. I like my job. But I told my boss that I wouldn't be coming back if it meant that I had to have this experimental vaccine just to come back. So when I looked at him and he looked so defeated, and I said, well, why did you do it? He said, I didn't think I had any other choice. They told me they were going to let me go if I didn't do it. I said, yes, but you could have just stood your ground and said, well, I guess you're going to have to let me go. Because that is a choice. That's a choice that we all make freely. Woo! People who say they don't have a choice, are not looking at the whole picture. They're standing back and they're worried about their livelihood and they're worried about their income, and rightly so. They're worried about how they're going to provide for their families. But the way it is, is that if, if you feel that you don't have a choice, you're not looking at the whole picture. You always have a choice. I have a choice every day when I wake up. I have a choice of what I'm going to do that day and how I'm going to do it. Nobody else controls me, and I will not let this government or Andrew Fury, or Justin Trudeau, Dr. Fitzgerald, Dr. Hagee, and Dr. Savoy, tell me how I can live my life. They're going down! They are going down! So it's time for everybody to realize that, they, and, and this is something I want everyone to take home with them today. You always have a choice. Amen! Always. I had an argument with a friend of mine who, who's very religious. I never considered myself a religious man, although I was always spiritual. I always considered myself more agnostic than anything else. And for anyone who don't know what agnosticism is, I'm going to explain it for you. It means I always believed there was something greater, because I would be ignorant to think otherwise. But it also means that I believe that the human race will never understand what that is because we don't have the capacity to understand it. Therefore, anything other than that is blind faith. But as of lately, and I'm starting to change my mind on that. I really am. And the reason why is because a lot of these things that were prophesied in the Bible, such as one day you will have to take a mark in order to buy, sell, or trade, or work. Do you hear that? Christians that stood back and knowingly read that Bible time and time and time again and decided that this was the right thing to do. I feel very sorry for you. I really do. I feel sorry for those people like you would not believe. Because they sold their soul to the devil. As far as I'm concerned. Boo! And the devil is not in the devil is the sense of the devil that we all know about. But the devil is in the details. And the details are, is coerced consent is still extortion. 
no matter how you look at it, they're using your livelihood and your income as extortion to make you do what they want. And if you don't do it, you're going to lose your job. You're not going to be able to eat in a restaurant. You're not going to be able to go to a gym. You're not going to be able to do the things that you've grown accustomed to just because they say so. I want to know is who are these people that think that they're above us all, that we voted them in, and now they're hiding behind the bureaucrats and the health officials so that they can get reelected because there's no accountability for them if, oh, I'm just doing what the health officials told me to do. I'm just doing what Dr. Fitzgerald told us to do. I'm just do it's all on somebody else so that they can get reelected, and that's all it is. Remember that next time you vote. Remember, it's not always the person with the nice hair. It's not always the person that speaks the most eloquent. Sometimes it's the person that trips over himself and gets back up and wipes off his knees and keeps on going. Woo! I mean, that's what we're all doing here, right? Yeah! We're all standing here because we feel that something is wrong. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I felt something was wrong right from the start. Absolutely! And the difference between a good man and a bad man is very, very fine line. A good man, when he does something wrong, he takes the necessary steps to rectify it. He feels he's done wrong here and here. And then he takes the necessary steps to, to fix that, to rectify the wrongs that he creates. But a bad man doesn't care either way. He can continue doing the same things over and over again and step on people over and over again and it does not phase him either way. And I think that that's what we're dealing with right now in government. All these people, they just keep saying the same things, the same talking points. The parties, the party system, they're all doing the same thing. I voted conservative. I'm a conservative, I have conservative values, and I don't mind telling people that. I was told by a person who is self-proclaimed Indo-Canadian, which means that he's, his parents are East Indian, uh, and, and he is an Indo-Canadian, born and raised in Canada. And he told me and my friend that because we had conservative values, we were inherently racist. I said, really? I said, I grew up in Fort McMurray, so I got lots of native friends and lots of friends from all colors and creeds. And I have never in my life been called a racist. That was the first time. And I said, so what about my friend who's 100% Cree indigenous and he has conservative values? What about him? Is he racist too? He said, no. He said, because he usually, he likely only has conservative values just to muggle up to his white friends. And I said, who's the racist now? And so we had this the debate back and forth. And I said, so you mean to tell me that because I'm white and I have conservative values, I'm a racist, but my indigenous friend who has conservative values is not a racist. He said, yes, that's right. Wow. That was mind-blowing. That was an eye-opener for me that I realized that, you know, it's not about the party system. It's not about what the government's telling you. It's about what you feel in your heart. If you feel it's wrong, it's wrong. There's no other way around it. If you feel and you feel that it's wrong, it's wrong. And what the government is doing to us is wrong. I mean, we all know that. But what's going to change it? We are! All you. That's right. All the people here, all the people that are doing this across the province, across Canada. I mean, what gave me a glimmer of hope? I thought it was all, all was lost. I really did. But what gave me a glimmer of hope was the fact that the RCMP and the RCMP union is standing up against this as well. Woo! And if they win, you can be guaranteed that the firemen's union will be right behind them. And if they win, you can be guaranteed that the nurses' union will be right behind them. Because they usually always stick together anyways. So, every step forward counts. As long as we're not taking any steps backwards. Like I say, this is a peaceful protest. I'm glad all you people came today. And like I say, every step forward, every step forward, every person that you can educate on this matter, this is something that we all have to do. I didn't want to talk here today. I didn't want to do this. I don't want to be doing this. But I felt that it had to be done, and I felt that last time I seen it on Facebook that there was no PA system here. I said, well, they'll be heard today. They'll be heard today. Woo got anything to say? Come up and say it. You're welcome to say it.
My name is Calvin. I worked a number of years in refugee camps. I traveled 10 years in war zones. I know the price you pay for dictatorship. It does not work. The, uh, if you want to go home when you go home, look up the story of Uganda. It's a disaster. Look up the story of Zimbabwe. It's a disaster. Look up the story of Ethiopia. It's a disaster. You look at the stories coming out of Germany and Russia. They are disastrous. And we're at the gate. If we do not stand up for your freedom, you're going to lose it. You lose it this week or next week, but you're going to lose it. And it's not just your freedom. Any benefits that you labored for in your time on this island, you're going to lose. If you lose this battle, you're going to lose. Now you can sign out at the front and say, well, this is a little one. But I can assure you, next month will be another one. And the month after that will be another one. When I was in Zimbabwe, Mugabe took power and destroyed the nation. That actually took place in our lifetime. I walked over the bridge of Uganda where Idi Amin took the power. He destroyed the nation and they killed so many people on the bridge going up to the dam and threw their bodies into the water that the generating station had to stop too many bodies in the water. That's the world we live in. And if you think for one moment that the government itself is going to take care of you, they're not. It's not going to happen. You're going down! You have to decide to stand up and be counted now. We are, I don't know if you know this, but we are in the minority here. And if a difference is going to take place at the next rally, you've got to bring five people with you. Yeah! Come on, just down, everybody! Everybody has to stand up and be counted. We're here until 3 o'clock. And there's too much at risk. This week, after the, uh, some situations took place, I went down to McDonald's, but I wasn't allowed in. So I said, I'll try over at the, the other one, what's called, uh, you know, the... A and W. A and W. They wouldn't let me in there either. Boo! But I'm telling you, the time is coming. If you don't stand up now, you can bow to a little thing. We all do it. it it's, it's like fishing. It's the bait to bring you in. But you be assured, once you're in, your rights are gone. Somebody said, well, can it happen in Newfoundland? I got news for you. It can happen and is happening now. If you read history, Germany was the greatest industrial base in all of Europe. And Hitler invented Auschwitz and six million died. They weren't only Jews, you know. They were some of his own people that didn't like the party. And they marched them to the camps and they died. We're gathered here you don't know what's coming down the pipe next week. That's right. That's right. But I can tell you what's coming down is not good. I know I've seen it. I've been there 10 years. I followed South Africa to Egypt, from Ethiopia to the Ivory Coast. And I saw the last camp I was in, there was 600,000 refugees. You know why they were there? Because some dictator took over the country and they were excommunicated. In the war years in Europe, when the war was over, thousands, hundreds of thousands left Germany, 
They left Hungary and they left Russia and they came to Canada. But I can tell you something. There's no country to go to now. When we're in crisis, where do you think you're going to go? There is no one to go. You don't have your passport. You're not moving anywhere. And so you're under the dictatorship of the government in power. Now, see, you know I'm up here. Tomorrow I'll get a knock on my door. You'll be assured. I know the price that is paid. I know people watch my house right now because I don't go along with what is happening. And that's the way it's going to be. People will betray you because you stand up. But if you want to stand, you better do it now. You cannot afford Woo! to Woo We got a very small window. If you understand, I saw this interview myself. It was in writing. You can look at it on the site. Mr. Trudeau said, according to the CBC, that if you're not vaccinated by the end of December, you could lose your pension. That's in there. You look it up. We are at a crossroads. I do believe in God. I believe he's the only answer. And if we don't stand up, we're heading down a pathway you wish you never got on. And uh, my first wife was from Germany, Russia. I know the story. I've been there. The, the torment and the refugee camps and the war zones, families divided, lost, never seen them anymore. That's how it happens. And that's how it happened on this island if you don't stand up for God and stand up for country. Your first right is here. Though I've been away 50 years, but I'm back. I came back to retire. But I, I came out of retirement now to be here. And we thank you for that. <laughs> this, I'll, I'll quote a, a, a saying from a great man that we all recognize, and I'll say what he said. In the midst of the darkest hour in Europe, when Hitler was dropping the bombs on London and Amsterdam was basically going underwater, the decks were torn down, everything was in disarray, and Hitler said, we're going to march into England and it's going to be over. Winnie Churchill stood on the platform and this is what he said. We'll fight him on the land. We'll fight him in the sea. We'll fight him in the air. We'll fight until we win because he said, this is Britain's finest hour. And I say to you, this is Newfoundland's finest hour. Woo! Yay! And make a difference. If you don't stand now, you won't stand later. That's how it works. You have to stand up and be counted. And it's going to cost you something. You're going to get excommunicated. You'll get excommunicated from your church, from your place of employment. Wherever you go, you'll get excommunicated. But your greatest friends are going to be the ones around you. They will be the people who will stand with you. And if we go down fighting, let it be so. Stand up and be counted. Now, when I traveled and I went into these <coughs> war zones, and I asked one day, I said, what's wrong with that young man there? He was strong, he was big, and we were bringing food into the camps. I said, what's wrong with him? And they said, sir, it's like this. Last week, when they captured the boy and they had brought him in, they brought him in and they brought his parents with him. And they said, in front of him, last week, they shot both his parents. And he never got over it. You say, Calvin, that's extreme. Evil knows no limit. It doesn't. And if you follow it, you're the loser. So the time 
if you have another rally, I, I'm not, I don't speak at rallies, but there I am. Awesome. We have the stand up. And next week, if you have a rally, bring five people with you. Yeah. Whether they're vaccinated or not. I'm not here preaching against vaccination. I'm preaching about whether we're going to save the island or not. Freedom. Freedom. Let freedom reign. <clears throat> Dr. Martin Luther King said it well. We must have freedom. And if we don't have that, you have nothing. You have nothing. You have nowhere to go and nothing to live for here. This is your finest hour. And if you should call your friends that live in Pointe Bay or Badger or wherever and pack this place out. Because if you don't do it now, your little window is going to get smaller. And the jobs of people I know, and I have a lot of friends who live in the U.S., they're standing up down there. But we surrendered up here. We surrendered to the passport. We surrendered to every law of COVID-19. And we lost our freedom. I say, the wolf is not necessarily at the door. He's coming into the house. And, yes. And here we are. So I say to you, be strong. If you never prayed in your life, you better start praying. If you want something for your family, I say stand up and be counted. Don't be a chicken. Stand up. Walk with God. Walk in truth. And we'll have a better tomorrow. Thank you for listening. And that was the words of a veteran, ladies and gentlemen. Someone who fought next to the people that paid the ultimate price for your freedom. So that we could be here today. That was amazing. Anyone else got anything to say? I just want to say a few words there. That uh, I'm looking at the organizers, and I guess all this stuff here costs money. And we're not here today to look for money. But uh, I wonder if... Any, anybody got a little bit of change or something, you're dropping the cup there and just help out those people that's, you know, organize your stuff. They're bringing coffee and that, and, you know. I appreciate them. And let's see if we can do what we came to help with it. But I know there's people coming from different parts of the island and bringing in PA system and all this stuff, right? So thank you. It's just what you really feel led to do, right? Have, have, have your say. This is your place. I'm not very good at public speaking at all. My heart is pounding. Right I, I would like for us all to remember that we are pro-choice, and it's so nice to see everybody here and hear what everybody has to say. I think this is very powerful, and I know there's probably even more people that want to have something to say, but if we could take a little break and play some tunes for the kids, <laughs> I have a few requests. <laughs> That's okay. Good. 